so really good on that front and then on the bill savings we've modelled it was about £2,000 uh, a year to run before the works and it's looking at being about £500 a year after the work um, so a lot of hopefully extra cash for the resident to spend on other things rather than energy bills. Yeah absolutely and what's the cost of all the measures? Um, so there's a few different ways of looking at it obviously as I said um, for the windows mm -hmm. it was more of an uplift so mm -hmm. we've sort of taken some of that cost out because we would have been having to replace the windows anyway. Mm -hmm. um, for the heat pump, if you're a private tenant, you can get the boiler upgrade scheme grant, which takes seven and a half thousand pounds off the amount. So it depends. For, for this home, we were looking, I think, about 70,000 that we spent mm -hmm. on the measures. That's before you take off the fact that we were going to have to replace the windows anyway. Um, so that immediately brings it down by about 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's sort of quite a few caveats in there for the cost. Yeah, that's um, it. And it's because it's going to depend on the individual mm -hmm. scenario. So yeah, factor those things in, you're looking more like 50,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think as well, it's also important to bear in mind that it's like a long-term investment for the council and all of these things as well, isn't mm -hmm. it? And also, again, it's like an innovation home, so you wouldn't necessarily no. need all of this stuff doing on every home. It's just a case study to trial everything and see you know, how things perform yeah. and, and monitor everything. Yeah. So, no, I think that's pretty impressive, really. Pretty impressive saving. Again, you know, it's all about long-term thinking as well, isn't it? You know, yeah. You're not in this for the short haul. No. You know, it's about building that long-term resilience. That's it, yeah, because... You know, there is payback there, so as I mm. say, one and a half thousand pounds um, a year saving on the bills. But you've also got the fact that at the minute the government's saying that sort of from twenty thirty onwards, homes will all have to be PCC if you want to rent them out. Obviously, this yeah. was a D before, so you've got the commercial element of that. Um, obviously, savings on repairs and maintenance because of the quality of the stuff that we put in. So you've got all of those extra kind of hidden values almost on top of the straightforward bill payback as well. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think as well, it's also on the water side, something really worth bearing in mind because there's some predictions that water bills are going to go up by 60%. Um, and you see all the issues with Thames water mm -hmm. and all the sewage release and things into the oceans and the rivers, that this is a really quite big crisis. And actually, um, there's a lot of new legislation coming in that I mentioned a moment ago, whereby now you actually can't build new homes in some regions mm -hmm. of the UK unless you're able to demonstrate mm -hmm. that water like neutrality. So you've already mentioned the government schemes helping reduce the, um, the cost and the outlay in terms of some of these new techs, but actually similarly in a lot of these areas that are now experiencing these serious issues, there's a lot of funding now available to also fund those sort mm -hmm. of retrofit measures like Thames mm -hmm. Water for instance are funding about 50% of the hydraulic units now. Mm -hmm. So the water company is also starting to realise that mm -hmm. actually like Yes, we can keep building new sewage treatment plants. We can keep building new, um, you know, money, more aquifers yeah. and more abstraction from rivers. But actually, it's not really sustainable. What we actually need to do is take a much more like circular route and reduce use exactly. of source yeah. or this kind of thing. Out the bigger picture. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah.